Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make my layered St. Patrick's Day truck. You can download the free cutting file for this project at craftwithsarah.com forward slash free dash SVGs or follow the link in the description of this video to go straight to the download page. The download comes in a zip folder and you need to unzip this before you can upload the files into Cricut Design Space. If you're not sure how to do this, again, check the description of the video and follow the link to the written tutorial which accompanies this video. Once you've unzipped the folder, open up Design Space and start a new project. Go over to Upload on the left and then Upload Image. You can either click Browse to find the file on your computer or drag and drop it in, which is what I'm going to do. So here are my files and you'll notice that there are several different file formats. You want to choose the one which starts SVG in the file name if you're using Cricut Design Space. The other files won't work, so make sure you choose the one which starts SVG and then click and drag it in. And this is how it should look with all of the layers one on top of each other. If yours looks different and you can see all the layers next to each other instead, that means you've accidentally uploaded the wrong file type. So if that's the case, click cancel down on the bottom right and try again and make sure you upload the one which starts SVG in the file name. When it looks like this, go ahead and press upload and then the design will show in your recent uploads so you can click on it and then over on the bottom right, press add to canvas. This will automatically be separated in all of the different layers, which you can see down the right hand side. You may want to resize the design so that it will fit better in your frame or wherever it is that you'll be displaying it. I'm going to make my 9.5 inches in width to fit inside my A4 frame. To do this, make sure you've got the design clicked and then over at the top, simply type your width or your height into the box. Make sure the padlock icon is closed so it will all change in proportion and then press enter on the keyboard. So you can see that that changed the width and also the height, but it's still all looking perfect. This design does have quite a lot of greens in it for all of the different shamrocks and four leaf clovers and also the colors on the track. If you go over to Color Sync on the top right, you can see there's actually four shades of green. If you don't have that many shades of green card, then you can simplify it and use less colors. And to do that, with this Color Sync button checked, you can simply click and drag the layers onto the other greens and have a play about and see how that affects the colors. So now this would only need two shades of green instead of four. I will do mine with all four though, so I'm just gonna undo that twice. And if you want to go back to the normal view, just press layers up here. And then when you're happy with how it's looking, press make it. This will separate out all of the different colors onto your different mats for you. If you want to, you can change the paper size by clicking into the little drop downs and choosing the size. You will need to do that for every single colour, so just go through them if you need to change the size and then when you're happy with how it's all looking, press continue and then follow the steps on screen to get everything cut out with your Cricut machine. Here are all of my layers cut out for the layered St. Patrick's Day truck. I'm going to pull them all apart so that I can start sticking them together. We're going to start from the bottom and work our way up. So all of these layers, I'm just going to move over to the side. So for this design, I'm going to stick it together using a combination of glue and 3D foam pads. The glue I use is called Kalal, and I really like this because it doesn't bend or wrinkle the cardstock like some other glues can do. And I put it into these needle tip applicator bottles so that I can get the glue in all the little spaces really easily. The brand of foam pads that I'm using is Dot and Dab, but any foam squares will do. If your foam squares are big, you might need to cut them smaller so that they'll fit into the different shapes when we're adding them on in a moment. For this bottom layer, you can choose to either glue or foam the black layer onto the bottom. I've done it both ways for some of my other tracks that I've done, but I prefer it with the glue. So I'm going to glue this one, but it is up to you. Included in the download folder is an assembly guide PDF, which goes through all of the different layers and whether to use glue or foam for each one. 
And for layers like this, where it's optional, I will state that on the PDF. So I've gone all the way around the edge. It's probably quite tricky to tell on the black cardstock. I'm just putting some in the middle as well so that I get a good stick on it. I'll put it onto that bottom layer, the grey, and line it up. And the nice thing about glue is that if it's not quite in position, you can move it about until that glue's dry. But there we go, first layer done. I'm going to separate out some more of these. And the next layer is this one here, which I'm going to add the foam pads to. So let's turn it over and get my foam. Now these foam pads are quite good because they're really small so I can fit them into the little gaps. And it's important that you put your foam pads all the way around the edge of the design, but also we're going to need to put some in the middle and that's to create stability so that the card doesn't sag in that middle. If we were to leave it empty, then there's nothing to hold up that big bit of card and you'll find that the middle part of it starts doming downwards. And we don't want that because it doesn't give as good an effect to the final project. Make sure you don't put your foam pads over any of the holes in the cardstock, especially these teeny tiny holes along the side of the truck. Otherwise you'll see them when you turn the card upside down and stick it together. And we don't want to be able to see our foam. Now I've got all these into place, I can peel off the tops of the foam pads to reveal the stickiness underneath. And now I can bring my base pieces back in and then line this up. So how I like to do it is to get it into position and then gently drop it down. And that way, if you've not quite lined it up right, you can pick it up again and reposition it without damaging anything because all we've done is lightly place it on top. But I'm happy with how that's looking so I will just push it down to seal all of those foam pads. Next I'll add the little hubcaps. I've got these two here and for this I'll use my foam pads again. So I've turned that upside down. Well then it's pretty symmetrical so I maybe didn't need to but it's good practice to turn it upside down. And then just stick that one in the middle there. And then I'll do the same for the back wheel. I'll work on the front of the truck first. So the next layer will be this big lighter green piece. And this one, again, I'm gonna use foam pads for. So let's turn it upside down and get those foam bits in there. <laughs> Lost my train of thought of what I was saying there. Again, make sure your foam doesn't go over any of the holes or over any of the edges. I've just realized you can't really see what I'm doing. And again, we want to put the foam pads in these middle spaces so we don't get any sagging of the cardstock. There, so I've gently dropped it and now I'm pushing down to seal. Next, I've got the bumper to go on there. And again, this will be a foam pad layer. Lots of foam pads for the front. There'll be a few less on the back because there's more layers. And I want it to be nice and even when it lines up. Get that one stuck. Okay, and then the last thing for the front is to add the Lucky Horseshoe, which is going to sit on the door. And this one I will glue on so that it looks almost like it's been painted onto the side of the truck. there. All right, time to fill in all of this on the back. And we've got more layers for this. So let's take a look at what we've got. There are four separate layers to make up the shamrocks to sit in the back. And then we've got the wooden part to cover the base of the truck. And then our little bumpers to go across there. As we've got so many more layers on the back than the front, we're going to use a combination of glue and foam so that when we're finished, these two parts will still line up and be the same height. 
For my first little layer of shamrocks, I'm going to glue it. So I've turned it upside down, and here is my glue. Slide it into position. You might need to tuck it under just the top of the front. The next layer is this one, and again, I'm going to glue this one. So I'll add my glue. I keep getting this out of shot. I've recently moved offices, so my filming area is all brand new to me, and I've not quite got it into position. The bit that's on the camera is a little bit far away, so I'm stretching. <laughs> I need to uh, tweak and play with it a bit. And also I need to figure out my audio because I know it's a bit echoey at the moment. So sorry about that, but hopefully we'll get that fixed soon. <laughs> okay, there's that one. And then the next one is this green one. And now I'm going to add some dimension with some foam pads. I'm going to need to cut my pads smaller to fit in these outlines. So I just cut one line of these in half. And then I can place these tiny bits around the edge. And if you don't want to use foam on these parts because it is a bit fiddly, that's absolutely fine. You could glue this layer instead. But I'm just trying to give it a little bit of dimension and add some separation between all of these different greens. Okay, that should be enough of those little pieces. So now I can peel the tops off. Line this one up. Again, I'm just going to tuck it under those bits of the front. I probably should have done the back first, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Alright, finally, we've got the white detail to go on the top here, and this one will be a glue layer. This is where the needle tips come in really handy, because it is a bit narrow around these edges. But the tiny nozzle handles it perfectly. Stick that down. Perfect. Okay, now because I want my um, wheels to be even, I'm going to have to glue this piece on there. If you're not fussed about them being even, um, then you could uh, use foam for this instead. Here we are. Oh, I just dropped my glue on the floor. <laughs> oh, the lid's off as well. Let's just get that. These are the two layers we've got left and the solid one's going to go on first and I'm going to glue this one on, oops, that way. Um, and the reason I'm going to glue this one is because I want the depth of the gap in the top bit, the darker bit, to be the same as on this side. So turn that over, just add a little bit of glue. Now you might notice there's some... Uh, old bits of foam pad on the front of this and that's because um, I did just do um, a little test run and went to stick it upside down <laughs> which wasn't very clever but anyway the last bit here is this front of the um, car tire cover thing <laughs> oh dear so this has got foam pads on and then it's just going to go on top of that piece and then we've got it peeking through to the green underneath looking exactly like it does on this side and it's all nice and level along the front of the trunk. So this is looking good. Here it is with all of those different layers and it's now ready to be framed. Here's my design all framed and I kept it really really simple. Because there's a lot going on with all of the different greens in there, I wanted to keep my background pretty plain and muted so that it didn't draw attention away. I knew I had this brown frame to put it in, so I wanted to match up with the brown along the back of the truck. And in my craft stash, I had this wonderful piece of handmade paper, which has a pale green tint to it, and then it's full of these natural leaves. And I think it ties together everything perfectly and I'm really happy with how this turned out. For other framing ideas, check out my other layered truck SVGs which I've done for other holidays. 
All of these are also free to download from my blog, craftwithsarah.com. The first one I did was last year for Halloween and I did this full themed truck. And then that was followed up with a Christmas one with a Christmas tree in the back. And then of course, a Valentine's Day one. This new St. Patrick's Day design is the latest edition. And don't worry, in a few weeks, of course, there will be an Easter truck theme as well. To make sure you don't miss out on that one, subscribe to my YouTube channel and make sure you've got your notifications on so that as soon as that video goes live, you'll be able to get the design. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make my free layered truck file for St. Patrick's Day. Don't forget to get the free SVG. Check the link in the description of this video. I'll be back very soon with some more St. Patrick's Day crafts. Thank you for watching. Bye.